So what we're going to do is we're going to, much like my demo, here I had a transverse wave on a rope. So a transverse wave is one that looks like this. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to figure out if we can see the speed of this rope. So let's work this out. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to redraw my benefit right here, what we have in the graphic. So I'm going to define my axes, x and y. And I have, we're just going to focus on some little section of that rope that's on the wave. Okay? And I'm going to say that this end of the rope, I'm going to call its position x. And I'm going to say this guy is at some position x plus Sorry, I'm going to write that a little bigger for all the folks in the back. X, X plus delta X. All right. So let's figure out what force is. I'm just going to redraw what we have right there. So this little piece of rope that's in the middle of doing the wave, he's being pulled down by some force, F1. And because I'm familiar, we're going to need to break it up in some components. Let's give this an angle. And let's call that theta 1. And this guy has been pulled with some force <coughs> F at x plus delta x. Sorry, let me, I ran out a little bit of room here. So let me rewrite it over here. This guy is F of x is this guy. OK. And he is at an angle. I'm going to call this theta 2. OK. And let me see. This guy has a really teeny tiny little mass. So I'm going to say he has a little mass equals mu times delta x. OK. So now let's do some of the forces, because that always seems like a good place to start. So if we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. OK, so it looks like pulling upwards, we have this force. So we have the force that's at position x plus delta x. But it's not all in the y. We have to do, the, we have to do some trig with this theta. It looks like it's using sine theta. So I'm going to say sine. And this I'm calling theta 2 because since this thing has some curvature, these thetas are not going to be the same. OK, now pulling down on it, we have the force that was at x times the sine of its theta. All right, and so all forces, they always sum up to equal ma. Yes, question? Are these two different forces acting on it? Just like in your picture of you, you have force on force 2, but like. It seems like it's one force, like just at different positions. It is one force at two different positions. So this is really the tension in the rope. So what we're talking about is, sorry, loud over here. So as I create a wave, we're talking about the tension in the rope that's pulling one little teeny tiny section of the rope that's causing it to accelerate up and down. Okay. Okay. OK, so if we're going to do ma, my little tiny mass <coughs> is mu delta x. And my acceleration in the y direction is just y double dot. OK, now <coughs> if this is a really tiny section of rope, and we're going to say that this little teeny tiny section of rope is a very small wave that we're sending through here. I should be clear on that. We're doing this for a very tiny wave, smaller than the one that I put on the rope here. <coughs> we can say that this little tiny piece of rope, it's not flying left or right. right? So we can say that, these, that this magnitude of this force is approximately constant over this. So I'm just going to pull that out. I'm going to call this F. And now I'm going to deal with what's in here. So we have, that's easy. <laughs> OK. Now, if we're talking about a really, really tiny disturbance, 
then that means these angles are very small. So we can say, ah, good. <laughs> we can say, uh, if theta is really tiny, sine theta is approximately what? Theta, there's another one. Tan theta. <laughs> what? She's crazy. <laughs> All right, and I can. So, what is cosine theta when theta is really, really tiny? One. What is tan theta always? Cosine over cosine. Sine over cosine, right? So, if cosine is almost one, then that means that sine is almost tangent. You'll see why in a second. <laughs> All right, so, humor me. <laughs> All right, so we have mu delta x, y double dot is equal to f <coughs> tangent at theta 2 minus tangent at theta 1. All right, but what is the tangent of this guy? The tangent, what is the tangent of this guy? It's really the rise over the run, right? What's that also known as? The slope. And in calculus speak, the derivative, okay, <laughs> dy dx, all right, I need to use this thing, hold on, okay, so we have mu delta x y double dot, ooh, I should have put some approximate signs here, sorry, okay, Okay, so we said the tangent is approximately equal to the derivative. So dy dx, but we have to evaluate at that point. Let's see, theta 2 was at x plus delta x. Okay, so that's tan theta 2 minus dy dx evaluated at x. All right. I am going to get y double dot by itself. Uh, yes. So I'm going to write y double dot. So I'm going to divide off my, I'm going to write f over mu right here. And I'm going to write this over delta x. No. no, don't freak out. <laughs> All right. What is that? <sighs> no. <laughs> Let's imagine that this thing, what if I wrote it as some function at x plus delta x? Minus some function at x, all over delta x, and let's say I let delta x get really tiny. What is that? Ah! That would just be d by dx of f, right? <laughs> so this thing right here. That is just d by dx of the function, which is dy dx. I need a new blackboard. Let me send this thing up. Genius. Okay. So <laughs> let's rewrite all that right here. Let's see. Where are we at? We've got, well, why is it, question? Yes. Um, well, how do you know that the derivative Oh, because the thing right here, let me get my fancy laser pointer. All right, the thing, the function that is being evaluated at x plus delta x is dy dx. Dy dx is the function in this case. Oh, oh. Colin? Because 
Okay, so the question is, how can we let both angles be very, very small? And if we took the limit, would they both just go to zero? Well, it's a lot like, remember in last lecture, we had the, potent, the effect of potential energy, which is like 1 over r minus 1 over r, or 1 over r squared minus 1 over r. And we talked about the limits. And sure, they both go to zero if r goes to infinity, but some go faster than others. So these are both tiny angles. Oh. <laughs> And they both go to and they both go to theta, but some get to theta. They go to different rates. So they're still slightly different. We're, the reason we can say they're both small is we're talking about a really, really tiny disturbance here. If we're talking a big macroscopic disturbance, like I showed in my demo, so that everybody in the cheap seats could see, um, then this wouldn't fall. This wouldn't hold. Yes. So to go about analyzing like this like wave motion, we're making a lot of assumptions. Yes. How well do they hold in real life? <laughs> <laughs> it, things get much more complicated when you start talking about things at non-small oscillations. And for today, we're only going to talk about the tiny ones because things okay. get a lot uglier. Any other questions? All right. <laughs> Let's write this beauty up here. So why is a little dot? I'm going to rewrite it in its clunky form, and I'm going to write it as d squared y dt squared. And I'm just going to write it equals because we're already making our assumptions here. Are you guys excited? What the heck? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, it's almost like you can find the velocity from here.